Our coach, you called it last night. You said this was going to be an unbelievable battle. There were going to be some ugly parts of it. You expected to run up and down. How would you sum up just the overall pace of that game? So many fouls and whatnot. Yeah, it was it was ugly and unbelievably frustrating. Uh, and that is what we expect from this game, right? Um, the great teams and the great players uh, recognize that they're not going to avoid frustration. It's ever present, and you just have to figure out a way to mentally trick yourself into, into loving it. Like we talked about at the eight-minute timeout, that this was actually a game not against our opponent as much as just against our frustration. It's not against the refs. It's not against the opponents. It's about our frustration. And so uh, the guys did a nice job trying to bottle up the best they can, and and uh, I'm super proud of them. You know, back-to-back -back nights to get started and kind of get our feet wet. Clearly, we have a lot of growth to do, but uh, it's a good start for us. What's item number one on your coaching agenda for getting better before Saturday against Utah Valley? Well, uh, you know, I mean, I, the only thing on my mind right now is Gavin Baxter. So I hope I ho <laughs> we appreciate everybody's prayers. Uh, he's worked so hard. And so we're, we're just super hopeful that we can get good news on him. Um, we'll see. Hopefully we'll know, you know, know something by later tonight or tomorrow. Uh, and then aside from that, um, just just us kind of adjusting to uh, a little bit of pr uh, pressure and disruption was an issue for us. Um, and, and so we'll get better at that. The way we're going to get better is by playing different opponents. This actually reminds me a lot of the Southern Utah game that we played here last year where penetration was a problem. The whistle was so frustrating. Not complaining about the refs, but just the whole game just felt so frustrating. And um, we grew from that, and we'll grow from this also. Yeah, undoubtedly uh, concerned about Gavin Baxter. And uh, we, too, from BYU Broadcasting, extend our best wishes for him in his return. There's been a lot of questions about Matt Harms as well, a guy who's been in a boot for the past two nights. When do you anticipate you'll see him make his BYU debut? Well, we're, we're going to try and run him a little bit of practice tomorrow and see. So, you know, if he responds well, maybe we'll get him a little bit Saturday. Uh, he's super close. We're just trying to be as careful and smart about it as we can. Um, so that we can have him long term. He's such an impact player. So uh, we're really, really hopeful that tomorrow will go well and, and uh, Saturday he'll be able to play a little bit. How would you sum up the play of Richard Harward tonight? Come on, big Rich. How fun is he? We've been talking about Rich for 16 months since he signed here. And now people got a little feel of like his impact. In fact, the best thing was uh, Brazat, their uh, point guard. He was checking back in the game with like 10 minutes left in the second half. And I was standing by, he was like, coach, that's a big fella, man. And so when your opponent is saying that, you know that he's having an impact on the game. I'm so proud of him. Uh, he just is, he's going to get better and better and better. Uh, he's carrying a lot, around a lot of pressure right now. And just the release of him being able to play, uh, we expect huge things from him. We're really happy for him. You joked last night that uh, Alex Barcelo is basically doing your job. He, yes. He's the coach on yes. the floor. Uh, what is it about him that makes him such a great leader? Well, he just he cares so much. First of all, he's a veteran guy. He's kind of been through the wars. He's seen the game from different player perspective, different position perspectives. He knows me really, really well. Uh, he's way smarter than I am and way tougher than I am. So all that together, in fact, it, we were in the second media timeout, and he was just like, Coach, just let me get the clipboard. Come on. So I'm going to hold him off for a little bit, but I'm really proud of him. I'm really proud of Brandon Averett, who also battled a lot of frustration today uh, and ended up playing great for us. And, you know, we had a great look from the young, exuberant Caleb Lohner, who got his first start in the second half and uh, managed to foul out in about 14 minutes, <laughs> give or take. And uh, that's what you expect. That's what you want from your rookies, that they play so hard. Uh, Spencer Johnson gave us a huge lift. Jesse Wade gave us really good minutes in the first half. You know, it's, it's, we're playing the whole team. And everybody's contributing. Kobe Lee was just incredibly solid again. So uh, I'm proud of everybody, and, and uh, we'll move on. We, we just know we got to get so much better. we got to do it fast. Saturday is going to be a colossal battle like every in-state game. Is we gotta, we got to find a way to you know strap ourselves back together and, and be ready. I know you've been waiting a long time for the Thanksgiving meal that you're about to have post-game, and it will be a happy one with the win. But, but what's the best thing about Thanksgiving dinner? Hey, I, 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 I actually have no idea. I haven't got there yet, but I do want anybody that's still watching, I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving, man, from, from the whole team. Uh, we, we all, all of us that get to be a part of BYU in any form of fashion, whether you're in this gym or at home watching or alumni or just a fan, uh, we got so much to be grateful for, and we are so grateful for everybody that supports this program. There's so, so, many, so many blessings we have. Hey, Big Rich says he's about to gain 3% in body fat after this meal. Yeah, yeah, so. yo, Big Rich, hey, we're going to be eating three turkeys all by himself. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Coach. Congratulations. All right, thanks, guys.